This is Tom Bernacki. And do you have dry, cracked feet? Hey, it's winter time. I live in Michigan. I see this stuff all the time. Hundreds of people come in. I'm gonna show you the causes and the absolute best home remedies. I'm gonna show you the tips, the tricks, the stuff that works practically, stuff that you can start doing now to fix your dry, cracked feet. And we're starting now. What are the causes of dry cracked feet? Number one, it's a lack of moisture. Our skin takes 30 days to grow. There's a layer of stem cells and there's five layers of skin on the bottom of the foot. The stem cells essentially grow and push up and weave together, they get stronger, and then there's a thick dead skin layer which makes up the top two layers. The five levels of the skin are at the bottom, the basal layer, number two, the spinous layer, three, the granular layer, and then the thick scaly layers are the stratum corneum and the desquamating cells. These are the thick portion. What happens is the bottom of your feet and the palms of your hand, they have five layers of skin and about 90% of it is made of dead skin. Blood vessels don't actually penetrate 90% of that skin. So when it gets dry in the winter time, when you're exposed to a lot of rubbing, a lot of harsh conditions, that dry skin doesn't really heal. It can break, it can rip, and then fungus, bacteria can get in there. It gets itchy, it gets scaly, it starts cracking. That's the mechanism. There's not a ton of secret behind it, but a lot of things can predispose you. So the stratum corneum you can see in the foot makes up the vast majority of the five skin layers. And when it's dry, when it's dehydrated, you can see it starts to detach from the stratum granulosum. It gets thick, it's wavy, it starts to crack. That's when splits happen, especially when the skin gets dehydrated. It cracks, it rips, and it can bleed. So number one, lack of moisture. Essentially, if water can leave that dry skin, it will dehydrate because there's not a lot of blood coming up to hydrate it. It's not really like, hey, I gotta drink more water. It's really like, hey, blood vessels are not penetrating there. So when it's cold, cold and when there's not water in there. Those are things more likely to dry out that skin. When you take a shower and you wash off those protective oils, then that moisture can leave that dead dry skin. It basically can crack, twist, and split and create a wound for you. Things to consider are dry weather, low humidity, not using moisturizers. If you're dehydrated as well, if you have poor blood flow, so a lot of my patients have peripheral vascular disease, diabetes. If you have cold feet, that could be a cause. That means there's not a ton of blood flow circulating down there. And what happens is when it's winter time too, your blood vessels clamp up essentially and prevent as much blood flow from going to your fingertips and your toe tips. You can see that the blood vessels are in the dermis. They don't actually even reach the five layers of skin and the stratum corneum, that thick wavy crack layer, there's no blood vessels at all. So when it's dehydrated, when it's cold, you get a lot less nourishment there. Drinking a little bit of water only helps so much. Harsh soaps can this too. Harsh soaps essentially clean off the oils that protect your skin and they dehydrate that layer of skin even more. Hot showers, hot baths, if you're washing your hands frequently, if you're showering like once a day, twice a day, especially in the winter and not moisturizing afterwards, this will strip your skin of natural oils contributing to that dryness. Cold weather can sap that moisture from your skin. There's not as much water, you know, there's not as much humidity. Another one age, the older you get, everything gets worse. I don't think I have to tell you that, that's no secret. And medical conditions, eczema, psoriasis, menopause can contribute to this thyroid disorders. A big one is diabetes. Diabetes, peripheral vascular disease, and age. Essentially, there's less nutrition to that skin periphery. It gets more dry, cracks more, and does not heal as quickly. Diabetics have dry, cracked feet. This can lead to diabetic foot ulcers, venous ulcers. If you have any of these serious wounds that are not getting better, check out our foot ulcer guide, our ankle ulcer guide, swelling, diabetes, everything, very important conditions. And check out our vascular and poor blood flow guides to increase that blood flow down to your feet. Those are very important things to do to treat these conditions. And those are the real root causes. But don't worry, we're gonna go over some amazing home remedies. So keep watching. Poor foot hygiene as well. So not regularly moisturizing or cleaning your feet. This could lead to excess skin buildup, skin flakes, this could let bacteria, fungus get on there, it itches more. Another one is ill-fitting shoes, corns, calluses, friction. If you develop thick, hard calluses on your heels, the bottom of your foot, if you're come see a podiatrist like myself, we can clean that all off in one appointment. It's all covered stuff. 
because it's important that this cracked skin does not get worse. Come visit me in Michigan. I have guides on how to treat it all at home yourself as well. But if you have these skin conditions, come get checked out. Just be safe. And rarely in some cases, some people have hyperhidrosis, excessive sweating. There's creams, there's sprays you can put on for excessive sweating. I have guides on excessive sweating, foot odor below. There's allergies, irritants, certain types of socks certain types of shoes. I have guides on all that below. Then there's foot fungus, toenail fungus, athlete's foot. These are actual fungal and bacterial infections. I have guides on all of that. Check that out below. They're linked in the comments. And vitamin deficiencies. We're going to go over all this as well. So dry, cracked feet treatment and the best home remedies. I'm going to run through these and show you what the most important ones. So the tricky thing about YouTube is they don't actually let me show any images of treating dry, cracked feet. There's nothing I'd love to show you more than me actually treating these things as I have a ton of footage. But every time I put it up, the videos get demonetized and then nobody can watch them. So apologies. Maybe hit me up in the comments and see if there's any tips and tricks because I can't figure out how to get these videos posted and working. That's the tricky thing with the medical field. All my videos, like my wounds, my ulcers, skin condition treatments, they don't let me actually show this stuff. Help me out in the comments, give me some likes, give me some subscribes, and maybe we can sneak more of these in. Vitamin deficiencies. So there's a lot of vitamins you can supplement. Again, I will emphasize, it's probably not a vitamin deficiency, although it could be. But important ones are vitamin A. Vitamin A is responsible for skin health repair, and a deficiency can lead to flaky skin, especially on the feet and on the hands. Vitamin A is famous for its skin rolls. It helps with cell growth, anti-aging, skin barrier. It's useful for acne, skin repair, and improved skin texture. It's popular in dermatology in topical retinoids, but it's important to get the vitamin as well, 700 to 900 micrograms per day. Vitamin E, this is an antioxidant that helps protect the skin. That's why most creams have vitamin D in it. Is it the most important thing? I don't think it's the most important thing, and it's gonna make your creams 10 times more expensive. I'd say try the non-vitamin creams first. Save yourself a ton of money. If you do need that stuff, vitamin A, vitamin E are easily supplemented. Vitamin E is important as an antioxidant protectant, moisturizing, wound healing, anti-aging. It works by performing skin protection hydration. It's found in a lot of creams, lotions, and serums, and is generally safe. There's also vitamin B3, which is niacin. There's also vitamin B5. There's vitamin C, Vitamin C is really important for collagen production, which can lead to elasticity and hydration of your skin. Vitamin C is very important for skin health, 75 to 90 milligrams per day. It's an antioxidant, helps with your immune system, your skin collagen and iron absorption. A lot of citrus from berries, peppers, kiwi, leafy greens, tropical fruits. And then there's zinc, which is very important in wound healing. Listen, unless you have nutrition, unless you're like a diabetic, unless you have a lot of health issues, all you really need is a daily multivitamin. I like my favorite multivitamins and I have my best vitamins for poor blood flow, circulation, all that kind of stuff. I won't get into it too much here. It's probably not the cause of your dry. I really want to emphasize that the dry stratum corneum, this thick layer cracking, splitting, getting dehydrated, not getting enough moisture, not getting enough blood flow, that's the real cause. It's probably not a lack of vitamin in most people. The best creams for dry cracked skin. I'm gonna go over these in my guide as I go through it. The keys are to stay hydrated, and anytime you sweat or take a bath, clean that water off, pat it dry, and get some thick cream on there. That's gonna be very important. One really important thing is to protect your feet. With dry cracked skin, calluses, corns, splitting cracks on your heels, a lot of this, if you were laying in bed, you would not have any damage. So component, the biomechanical trauma that you caused to your skin. If you had thick, cushiony, soft socks that were well moisturized and lubricated, and you had a well cushioned shoe that took pressure off the ball of the foot and the heel, then you'd probably not have any friction or splitting on your heels. Now the trick is, if I take my heel and every time I walk, if I'm rubbing like this, that's going to create a lot of damage you want your foot to essentially just roll through. So pretend that this is your foot. If you take your foot and you're always rubbing it like this, your heel is gonna create a lot of friction, rub and the skin will split. What you really want is your foot to basically roll through without doing any of this side to side shear stress. And most people, your toes don't point straight, your feet are pointed out. 
that leads to heel stress, that leads to splitting. That's where good shoes, good orthotics come in. Now people with a lot of these foot problems, I recommend my favorite shoes down below. I'm also a big fan of shoes like OrthoFeet. If you're retirement age, OrthoFeet is the number one orthopedic shoe. They do a great job. I have discount codes and stuff available below. Check out my guide on slippers, sandals, and best shoes. They don't have to be ugly anymore. That's the beauty. And also pre-made orthotics, custom orthotics at home. I have guides on all that stuff below. It makes a big difference if you think you're getting some biomechanical sheer stress. Here are the best home remedies. Number one, foot soaks. If you have thick, dry skin, thick toenails, thick, flaky skin, you wanna soften up your skin. My favorite way to do this is Epsom salts. Epsom salts are cheap. Epsom salts are basically salt, has some magnesium in there. You can add some essential oils like lavender or tea tree oil. I don't really think you need to do that, but you can. In 15 minutes, everybody's watching TV. You're watching, you're watching college football. You're watching NFL. And by the way, as a Michigander, what they're doing to this poor Jim Harbaugh. This poor Jim Harbaugh. All this man's trying to do, win a national championship. He's trying to drink his milk, eat some steaks, and they're suspending him for just being a great human being. Don't give me too many thumbs down, especially people from Ohio. I know my video ratings need to drop like a rock for some of these comments, but I stand by it. And after you do your, getting back to serious matters here, after you do your soak, what happens is you wash off that oil on your skin. You wanna exfoliate. So use a pumice stone. You can use a foot file. Get that dry skin off there. Calluses, corns, thick toenails, you wanna to clean them up. If you're a diabetic, if you have health issues, come check it out with a podiatrist like myself. What you can do also is homemade foot scrubs. There are peels. You can put sheets that are sticky and they pull off all that dry skin. I link to those below. There's scrubs with sugar, salt, olive oil, coconut honey, where you can gently massage and scrub these onto your feet. It exfoliates it, gets all that dead dry skin. And then when you exfoliate, Now's the perfect time to get creams and lotions. Usually the thicker the cream, the better you're gonna do. Lotions are more for your face and the back of your hands. Creams are meant for the bottom of your foot. This is one really important thing. I see patients buy these really expensive creams that are probably too expensive. They have all the vitamins, they have all the extra stuff, the fragrances in them, and they don't use enough. What you wanna do is buy a lower cost cream apply it as long as you don't have any irritations or anything like that, which 99.9% .9 of people will not, you will do great using more cream and save a lot of money. You don't have to go crazy. You want things like glycerin, shea butter, urea cream, adding a thick layer, you can put cotton socks over it. When you go to sleep at night, this makes a big difference. Just make sure you don't put it between your toes and make sure you clip your toenails, clean off that dry skin with exfoliation first. You don't need to do a soak necessarily either. You do this in the shower. There's also foot scrubbers in the shower. There's things you can put down on the floor and you use your feet to kind of jostle back and forth where the bristles gently clean off that dead dry skin. Like I said, peels, pumice stones, just be safe. If you're a diabetic, don't cut or damage yourself. Easy ones that you can do, coconut oil. Coconut is pretty cheap. Just make sure you don't slip on the shower floor and hurt yourself or in the bathroom floor. But coconut oil is great. Petroleum jelly like Vaseline can be very effective. It's very thick. But if you have open wounds, don't necessarily put Vaseline on there. And you can also use honey, aloe vera. There's also a home remedy of a honey and aloe vera mix. I've seen a lot of good results, but combining some honey and some aloe vera, this can make a foot mask they leave on for 20 to 30 minutes and then you wash it off with warm water. Don't do it between your toes. Other home remedies are also an oatmeal foot bath. Oatmeal can help soothe dry, irritated skin. Blend oats into a fine powder and mix it with water. Soak your feet for 20 minutes. A tea bag soak as well. You can steep green tea, black tea for 15 to 20 minutes in warm foot bath. That can work as well. And the best time to apply these creams and gels is after a bath, after a shower, or when you're going to bed at night. When you wake up in the morning, your skin will be so much stronger, so much more hydrated. You also want to wear socks. After you put this on, you want to clean socks. It will avoid rubbing against your shoe. You want to get some good supportive shoes, some good slippers, and you want to keep repeating this. Here's the really big secret. It takes 30 days for your skin to grow. It can take time for your cuts to heal. So a lot of people that I see, they have really big cuts. It can take more than 30 days. One month, two months, 
is normal. For someone in retirement age with split heels, split cracks, our expected rate of closure is 50% of that wound closes in one month. You heard me correctly, it's slower than you think. And it takes 30 days for that skin to grow from the bottom to the top. At minimum, it's basically impossible to heal that cut in less than 30 days on the bottom of your foot. Keep protecting it. If you do have an open wound, put some antibiotic lotion on there keep moisturizing it, keep soaking, keep exfoliating. And you wanna do foot exercises too. If your feet are stiff, if they're not moving, I have a guide how to strengthen your feet and your ankles, all the exercise to do for home. Again, is that the most practical thing? I don't think it's the most practical solution. The others that are practical too are toenail fungus, athlete's foot. Athlete's foot is actual fungus on your dead dry skin. Very, very common. Check out my guide. If you have itchy, dry, flaky skin, if your skin is getting everywhere in your socks, in your shoes, check out my athlete's foot guide and the absolute best home remedies to take care of your toenail fungus. Check that out below.